Welcome to some more excellent, special Plotaholics South by Southwest 2020 virtual festival footage. I say it differently every time. Brian, how are yes, you today? hey I am surviving. Uh, I have I, not I been finding weird things to do. Your mood today versus the last time we had one of these. But you just came out of a meeting, so... Yes, yes, I did. And I'll tell you what, the meetings were about the business. And we're in the business for business because we're in a business here. That's right. That's, That's right. right. What I heard what sounded a lot like that. Um, yeah, today, the business of the business. Of today, business. Brian, we are uh, speaking with Ashley Eakin again. Hope I say the last name right. I always forget. She's nodding in the backstage area. So it's, it looks like <laughs> I did good. We're talking to Ashley Eakin, director and writer for the short film single. Let's go ahead and bring Ashley in. Ashley, how are you today? Hello, I'm doing good. Excellent. I like your exposed brick background. Thanks. That is that is some awesome background right there. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I'm I'm like I always wanted to live in a brick apartment and it kind of then I found a fiance who has a brick apartment. So yeah. So uh, your film single streamed uh, as part of the South by Southwest virtual festival. What was it like to be um, selected? I know that you were also uh, selected for one of the big prizes for South by Southwest. Yeah, uh, it was really amazing. You know, I've I've made a short, two shorts before this, and they've only gotten into a few festivals. So getting into South by was definitely a big highlight and kind of one of our goals. Um, and it's been, you know, it's kind of been a roller coaster journey because we were all excited to go. We got our Airbnbs. I had a whole crew of people going with me. And then coronavirus started to happen. And slowly but surely, it got canceled. And, you know, it started with a text between the group being like, is anyone worried about this? Should we still go? And luckily, like, they ended up canceling it, which I'm glad they did, because a week after, you know, they can't, before everyone was like, this is premature, but then when the festival is actually supposed to be happening is when, like, the NBA was, everything was canceled, and I'm like, I can't imagine being at South by with, like, thousands of people, you know, and, and this all happening, so it was for the best, but it's definitely, you know, it was disappointing for it to be canceled, but getting the special jury recognition award was really awesome and kind of bumped the recognition. And, you know, I've gotten signed by an agent by UTA since I've been in quarantine, um, been talking to a lot of, you know, different studios and, and production companies, pitching some of, you know, my, my stuff I have in development. So it's been very busy and crazy that everything has happened while I'm in my sweats yeah. and no shoes and, you know, just hanging out. Well, do you think that shoes are overrated. Film, do you think having the film on Amazon maybe helped with exposure with, with more people able to see the film maybe? Yeah. You know, I think the, we had it first on MailChimp. So MailChimp did a whole run with a bunch of the shorts and then Amazon came in after and did a 10 day festival. So both of those, it was actually amazing because AFI can tend to be a little strict about where your short goes. And since this was kind of like the only option, it was actually able for people to see it sooner than probably if nothing, you know, like this happened. And I raised money for the film. So there's like a whole bunch of people who have been waiting for this. And, you know, it was just really nice to share it with everyone. And then kind of the attention that it got from, you know, there's been some nice reviews and it's just been really the best for like the scenario. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I wonder if you would be willing to walk our uh, viewers through the film, uh, just a little synopsis and talk a little bit about its genesis and where it came from. Yeah. So this film, um, you know, I, I had to submit something for this AFI directing workshop for women, which is an amazing program. If you are a female director, female identifying and want something to really guide you through the industry you have to have made a couple things prior um i would strongly recommend applying because it's a, this amazing community but i was 
applying for that, trying to figure out what short I wanted to write for my application. And, you know, at the same time, I was kind of undergoing a, like an identity awakening. Um, I was born with a rare bone disease called Olier's and Mifushi syndrome. And my whole life, it was something that I wanted to hide. I'm very much like the lead character in um, the short. I'm not as intense or bold, but I definitely had an issue with the word disability. I didn't want to be you know, identified as disabled and was really kind of running from that identity. But within the past like three years, I've really came around. I used to work for John Chu, who um, directed Crazy Rich Asians. And I was kind of part of that whole movement, which was just really interesting about like representation in film and TV and made me kind of look at my own community and how people with disabilities have been represented and how the narrative is very narrow and kind of safe and cute. And it's not you know, there's not complex characters and they don't have good arcs. And so I really kind of pushed myself and dove into the community. I've met so many amazing, interesting people and like really like powerhouse, badass women. And I'm like, I want to create something that's kind of for our community that, you know, uncovers the complexities of dating and also um, being set up with someone who also has a disability and what conflicts could arise there. And there's, you know, a little personal, uh, you know, history to the to the story, um, just about my own reaction to being set up with someone who would have a disability. And then also I've had some friends who have been like, hey, I know someone who's perfect for you. You have one arm, they have one arm, you'd be great. And a lot of people don't get that that's very problematic. And, um, you know, I knew I had to do this story when people were like, you know, I'd say the log line, a girl born with one arm gets set up with a guy who has one hand and she's pissed. And people will go, why? I don't get it. Why is she pissed? And it's like, so that's where I was like, oh, okay, I got to make this film because people don't get it. And so yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit like the old trope of um, like the gay best friend that gets yeah. set up only other gay person that, that the character knows, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's any really like you know, community or minority that, you know, people don't have. And, and I mean, a lot of it really relates back to media. When you don't see characters, if you don't know anyone in your life personally, and you don't see characters who are kind of fully fleshed out and very complex humans, like every other human, that's what you kind of think is like everyone's the same. And so I wanted to create a character that was flawed, very bold and sassy. And it's a little bit of like therapy and cathartic to create a character who you know, she in a grocery store, a woman stares at her and she throws something on the counter and tells her she's rude and stomps that out. Was great. And I, I love yeah. the character. And oh yeah. I wanted to ask you about Delaney Feener, who who really breathes life into this character. Like, oh my goodness, she is freaking amazing. Yeah. She's like how do, you, how do you find somebody like Delaney? Yeah, so you know, I mean, the big issue with like roles for people with disabilities is sometimes finding the actor who fits the, you know, the person you had in your head is very hard. So it's a very limited pool of people. And I worked with an amazing casting director. Her name's Suzanne Yavu. She also was my roommate at one point. And um, we, you know, she knows I'm like passionate about this area. So we went in kind of just like, you know, dug into the community. We're reaching out to a ton of people and she got a tape submitted. Um, and it was Delaney and she instantly sent me her, you know, her audition was like, I'm obsessed with her. And meanwhile, I was like DMing people that I follow on Instagram who have disabilities being like, hi, I'm Ashley. Will you guys send me a tape of yourself? They're like, who are you? You're a weirdo. Um, <laughs> probably think I'm like some undercover creeper who's, you know, not a woman and, you know, just weird. Because there's a lot of strange people out there who have weird obsessions with people with disabilities. So, um but yeah, I Delaney was kind of like, we had to really dig and find her. But once we did, she's like the only person who really got the nuance of the role. She's been going to theater school. She graduated with a theater, theater major. And it's funny because she told me a story about when she was in college and she decided to pursue theater and like pick her major and declare it. The, her One of her like advisors or professors was like, you know that you know, you're never really going to have a career because of your arm. Like, it's fine if you do this, but, you know, and so I'm like, even like more props to her. We had our first conversation on the phone. I was like, I love this. I love this story because 
you know, screw that person. Like, but it's, yeah. you know, it is kind of the ideals of a lot of people growing up, especially me, you know, even I've worked in the industry for like 10 years as assistants to producers and directors and stuff. And, you know, a lot of my friends would do like extra background work just for extra money. And I was always like, I could never do it because I look different. And someone would be like, why is that person, you know, there it'd be like distracting. And even that mentality is like really interesting. And yeah. um, because we exist out in the in the real world, like why are we never on TV shows or in the background or, you know, someone, and it's getting better. You know, there are a lot of shows that are actually have characters of disabilities. Um, they're special on Netflix that Ryan O'Connell st stars in and he's amazing. It's very disruptive to the narrative of disability, which I'm always all about. So um, yeah, and then Jordan, the guy, I actually, found, I, I knew of him a year prior, I followed him on Instagram, and I knew that he was a model, like a fashion designer model guy, also was on reality TV at one point, and I just used him as a character for my head, like this is who the guy will be, and I was like, there's no way this guy can actually act, like I do this too often where I'm like, they'd be great, and then they can't really act, and you're like, oh, why'd I, why I choose that person? But he was like amazing in the audition, very natural, just like, you know, I was like, man, you need to just go out there and do everything. They should put you in like so many roles because you're just like effortless. And um, he really helped us read a lot against a lot of other women. You know, we held auditions and stuff and, and he was just a trooper for, you know, okay, here's your sixth person you're gonna read the whole scene with. Um, but he, you know, they both were amazing to work with and just their natural like, chemistry and fun and they'd improv and I'd be like wait say that all again but on camera because I love this discussion that's happening yeah. um it was, the chemistry yeah. is so great like in that room really uh which I love and I love, yeah I love anytime uh, a writer kind of introduces quirks and and little quirky sort of behavior you know to their characters and I love the idea that they have just this old like window unit on top of this roof that they're throwing yeah. at. I just I love that yeah, it's funny because we kind of were trying <laughs> that was really, to like, really cool. Yeah, we were trying to figure out what we could do. You know, I it's just so funny how like a script starts so small and like it more read like a play. They were just gonna go to the beach after this date and have a conversation, it was gonna end. And my managers at the time were like, This is like a play, like more needs to happen. So I kind of changed the script. She tries to ditch the date, he ends up talking her into some like therapeutic, you know, throwing egg situation and kind of naming the people who have wronged them or made fun of them in their life. And um, it was fun, you know, we had to be very careful because below, right past the window is actually like a whole other business and unit. And we're like, you cannot overshoot this because we will be in big trouble. <laughs> I did notice one of those bosses felt a little weak. I was like, yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, like, I'm like, wait a second. You're not really like hurling. Okay, so now it makes sense. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, there'd probably be a lawsuit involved, knowing it's LA as well. So, right. Um, yeah, you hit me with a damn egg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brian, I've been asking a ton of questions. What What do you have? Uh, I mean, you've been doing good. I'm happy. I'm, I've been having fun just not in agreement. But <laughs> I, I would say, and I definitely want to um sort of go back to what you were saying about you know, like how you got to the premise, how um, someone just feels, oh, well, you have something similar to someone I know. So you guys would be great for each other. I, I personally went through that an awful lot, you know, whenever I would, especially when I hit high school, because mm -hmm. I was one of maybe only 40 black kids that went to the school. So it was like, well, you guys should be friends. Yeah. Okay. Why? So I guess, um, the, the whole question is on top of that statement is did you run into any sort of like initial resistance when you decided this is what I'm going to do, you know, was, was there any potential resistance or was it all just, Hey, this is a great idea. Let's run with it. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because, you know, there is this idea within the community of people with disabilities, not all, but like, kind of a consensus I mean at least for me and like the people that I'm close with is like you want to be liked you try to make yourself not a burden like you compensate for having a disability and some people when they you know friends in the industry who actually um, have disabilities I sent them in a, a first cut 
And it's kind of similar, you know, the beginning is very similar to what's in now, but they were like, you know, I think she's too brash. I wish she was nicer. She's kind of making a big deal out of this. And it's kind of this weird inherent behavior that we have to like downplay how inconvenient things are, how rude people are, or kind of call them out. So it was interesting because I then kind of, I took the edit and made her nicer. And my mentor in the AFI program was like, she called me and was like, what are you doing? You've been talking this entire year about how you want to make a sassy, bold, brash character and you completely took away all of that. And I ended up like doing another edit and being like, oh my God, you're right, you know, and, and putting all that back in. So I think there is a little like nervousness from the community of like, oh no, we don't want everyone to see us like that. Like. I've really adapted to my, you know, disability and it's not a big issue and it's okay. And, you know, because you want to downplay it and you don't want to be this like burden in society. And I think like, it's okay. We need a whole array of different types of characters. You need like the asshole, you need the person who's very, very well adjusted, which like Jordan is very, the other character, Jake is more well adjusted. He's just like, whatever, I can call myself. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, you right. know, and, and I liked showing those two different life, you know, journeys and also how Jordan's parents kind of had, you know, some bias against his arm and hiding it in family photos, I think is like an interesting, you know, her mom totally embraced it and, and loved her and whatever, but then his mom, you know, took it a different way. And there's just so many different ways that people who have disabilities, you know, grow in their journey and their arc. And I think that's something that I never say like I want, our narrative to be completely different and that people aren't doing it right. I just wanted to diversify it. Like we need more examples and more people and more characters. And, you know, so that's kind of the only resistance, you know, was really just like, I mean, there was also a resistance from me of being scared to kind of like dive into this side. And with my first short that I ever made blue, I actually wanted, it's kind of about like being different and it's more of like an artistic expression film but I, I raised like the same budget and it was like a proper film, but um, I tried to cast people with disabilities and it was like, we couldn't find someone who could really carry the role um, like properly. And it's, you know, I, I could have gone with someone, but they just were very green. And it was, it, you know, my, my casting director was like, it's not gonna benefit your film to have this person and the whole like, difference in disability was kind of a metaphor anyways. It would have been like a hat on a hat type of situation. But, um, you know, I was nervous. Like, you just don't know. And I and I kept saying, you know, I, I don't want people to come back to me and be like, you did us wrong by representing the disability community. Cause it's, a, it's like a lot of pressure. But all I can say is like, this is my experience. This is experience of a lot of my friends. Maybe it's not your experience, but here's like a look into you know, a certain situation. You know, I've gone on a one date with a guy who has um, a, a disability and it's pretty minor, but on the day I was like focused so much on how people were looking at us and like super hyper aware and just like paranoid because at that point in my life, I was not okay with like who I was and my body and everything. And I realized like, you know, that was also a little bit of a seed probably like almost like eight years ago, you know, or seven years ago when I, you know, had that date. And then now that I'm on this other journey, I'm like, I'm gonna use some of those feelings of like being incredibly <laughs> insecure about both of us. Like I'm already insecure about myself. I can't have like also being insecure for you, you know? Um, and, <laughs> one of the things that um, that I really liked about the the date that they went on, and you, you sort of uh, mentioned this, how he's a little bit more adjusted uh, to this and has a healthier outlook than she does. Um, I like that, that his character tries to pivot the date away from it. And, uh, you know, and she does this too, right? She asks him all these questions about his religion and his politics and all of this stuff. <laughs> and, um, and just kind of uh, plays the contrarian, you know, and, and just kind of automatically says the opposite to him. Um, but I like that. There, that was a really nice way of giving them both a little bit more texture, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, agree. And yeah. Making them a little bit more complex. So I like that. Um, in your intro to, to the South by Southwest video, you talked about, and you've already mentioned this today too, um, how your goal is um, more diversity in the kinds of stories that uh, people with disabilities are 
are featured in. I wonder what you what your sort of ideal Hollywood landscape would look like. What 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 is the end goal here? I mean, I think the really huge goal, which is like, you know, happening with other minorities is like someone with a disabilities cast and it's not their arc isn't to accept their disability. Um, but I think right now, because it's not mainstream and this these ideas are so commercial and especially like when I pitch my log line and people are like, but they'd be great together. Like, okay, we have a long way to go. And I think, you know, a lot of my journey is about self-acceptance. Like it's, it, that is part of my own character arc. So I think the first like couple of projects, you know, I want to do are going to kind of focus on that arc, but then also have a million other storylines. You know, it's when the character has one purpose, you know, and, and I think um, obviously like authentic casting would be amazing. I'm very conflicted on that. I'm not like, you know, you should never ever have someone cast who doesn't have the disability because you also want these stories to be seen. And like something like Wonder, which, you know, I, I think is a great film. You do wish it was authentic casting and, and the, the, the child actually had a facial difference. But also my nephew saw that film in like fourth grade and had, you know, a class about it. They all went to the theater. We had this amazing conversation about like different people. And, and I think like, it is complicated, but I do want to see the wave of like, okay, now we actually have to discover people. And that's what I'm constantly doing. Like the whole me DMing people on Instagram, I literally did it to a girl today who was born without legs. She skateboards, she's super rad. And I'm like, hey, like, you know, have you ever acted? And she has before. It's like just cool to kind of find these people where I try and start now like with the actor or try and find someone who would be down to kind of be trained or, you know, go through the process because then you don't really have the option to say, oh, let's cast someone else. I'm like, I already found her. This is it. And it also helps people see the vision of the project, you know, because you you can authentically like represent this. There isn't going to have to be VFX, you know, it, it'll be cheaper. Um, well, as you create more spaces for people with disabilities to be cast, then hopefully advisors at colleges will stop telling their students exactly. right have a future in that you know yeah um, i did have one other question though too yeah, exactly. when, when you fi finish your point but i was gonna say it's a very sort of like top down kind of thing that mm -hmm. you know and and thank god for people like you that are in that that are occupying that space and creating those parts for people because that work will ultimately start to trickle down you know yeah and you know i always say too like it does start you know, I worked for John Chu for two and a half years, and that was a very hard job to get, like in 10 second interview, you know, it was just very coveted, these positions for director's assistants, because I got to go to Malaysia and Singapore with him and was on set. And like, just that is him unknowingly maybe, but doing his part in disability representation, because I was on a huge set, a Warner Brothers set, like there's this Vogue picture of me and like the whole set is happening. And then I'm in the very small of the corner, like on that set with everyone, like, you know, and you can tell that I have different arms or, you know, I have a disability. And I think that's like putting that idea in my head that I could be on a set like that. And that it just trickles down, you know, where now it's, as you were saying, like it's a top down situation where people first have to be able to envision it and imagine it and see themselves there and not be intimidated by it. So. So my question I had, and I don't know if if it was irony or if it was coincidence. So that's why I'm asking the scene in the grocery store where the where she picks up the doll for the little girl and the little girl is staring. Now, from a black person's perspective, I'm used to being the one being stared at in the store. So was that just was that was that done purposefully or was that coincidence? Um, it was a coincidence, but you know, I love what it represents because I think, um, you know, and I, I actually reach out to Mattel and I have a friend who's a little person who works at Mattel and actually got clearance for me to use their Barbie doll because I think it's like, it's this whole thing about there's even Barbie dolls, you know, that now actually have representation for people with disabilities. It's like kind of a new thing that's happening, but that's like, even our Barbie dolls have two arms and four, you know, two legs and you know, I think it it just kind of like worked out, you know, I want my my sets to be as diverse as I can. And honestly, the little girl was just like, 
amazing and her interview was hilarious or her audition was hilarious because my casting director Delaney was in Chicago so we couldn't have them actually interact and she you know my casting director asked her you know like what would you do if you saw someone who you know picked up something but they had one arm and she was like I would ask them why are your arms like that and just so sassy and amazing where I was like, she's it, you know? And, and we, we auditioned a bunch of like, I mean, the best thing is I wish I could just publicly share all the auditions because there, some of them are so sweet and like beautiful and amazing. And someone was like, I, I would be their friend. I wouldn't want them to be alone or, you know, like the sweetness. And then there's this one kid who was like, you know, if they pick up something for me and try and hand it to me, like I'm not touching it. And you're like, oh shit, like this is just the spectrum of what kids have learned, you know, and they're like four or five, you know, it's just crazy. But, you know, it's more a coincidence. I wasn't like seeking that out, but, you know, I definitely like kind of the, the play on it of how, you know, so many people talk about diversity in film, but disability is always ignored. You know, it's even, I don't know who it was. I think it was Brad Pitt. Someone at the Academy like did a long list of all the people and things that we want to represent and advocate for. And like, he left out disability and you're like, dang it, you know, but. Brad. Yeah. (laughs) But Um, I mean, you know. I'm really interested in talking about what you have on the docket and what what is in the future for oh yes yes absolutely yeah so i um right now i'm actually pitching a tv series to production companies and it's about um online dating and like app dating and having a disability so after a breakup this is like oh my god 2013 after a breakup i did like five years of online dating and at this point in my life i was not comfortable was showing my disability. So like you would just see my face kind of like you do in this interview. And then they, you know, guys wouldn't really know what they were meeting with. And I was, you know, it's just a very obscure, strange people that I met. And then also fun and just being single in LA and, you know, some people not caring at all and some people just being really strange and weird and and actually turning into these like insane antidotes that I have. Um, Narrative. Yeah, narrative. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. So I mean, it's you know, similar, right similar tone of single. Um, you know, the character's a little more complex and not as like instantly brash and you know, fuck the world type of situation. But um, yeah, it's been fun and like the reception from these companies. You know, are like, oh my god! Like some people, it's really funny because I have this like theory that when men see and I like have this whole deck of like hot women who have like missing limbs or disabilities. And I think when men see a woman and they think she's hot, but then like is missing a leg, their like brain explodes and (laughs) they don't really know what to do. And they're kind of just like, oh, you know? So I think it's gonna be a, like it's definitely something new that they're seeing. And I think for people to realize like commercial appeal to it or that it'll be a successful show or, you know, at the end of the day, Hollywood's about making Mm -hmm. money, so. Um, we'll see, you know, what happens. And I've had some interest from some interesting places that I'm like, okay, cool. So we're kind of just that like, show, uh, do you envision that series as like premium cable? Is it a little raw? Is it? Yeah. Like- I mean, I definitely use kind of like hints of flea bag, um, girls mm-hmm. smell like, you know, insecure. I definitely want it to push the envelope because I think especially with disability content, it's always very safe and like yeah. cute. And I want it to have like the same kind of... would water you way down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, I'm not like super anti that, but I just think, you know, I think this would probably live on like a streaming or a, you know, yeah. cable something. Well, so we didn't have to stay as safe. Well, it's, it's kind of hard to be real if you're being watered down. I mean, it's easy to water down some, because even stuff that's supposed to be realistic that that's watered down, it's still really, really, really like, it's no way it's real. Like, like, come on, the the Tanner family lives in San Francisco and there's no real crime. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) I think think with most new subject matter, you have to have that series or that film that really like bust the wall down. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. can get like the modern family version of it later, but like you have right. to, yeah. 
you have to have something that just knocks knocks it out of the park. Yeah, you. and I mean, I think for this it is kind of that, you know, like pushing the boundaries. But the thing is, like, I just woke up today and I told my fiance, I'm like, I want to make so many stories that have different angles of disabilities and diff for different audiences and like, you know, the coming of age like YA world would like benefit so much from like a story about a girl who has a disability in high school and you know there's so many well, young there's like a, there's a niche for that in children's literature as well as yeah i mean it's everywhere you know Absolutely. my friend who has one arm she told me this amazing story about how like a little kid ran up to her at a park and was like what's wrong with your arm and she's like have you seen finding nemo and he's like, yeah. And she's like, well, I'm like Nemo. And he goes, okay. And then runs away. And that's like it, you know, it can completely like, if you have someone to point to or someone to kind of just like associate yourself with, you right. know, I think it's, and kids is where it starts, you know, all the ableism stuff that we're born into, like before I even, you know, I didn't, you know, I was like an ableist my whole life basically until, you know, three years ago where I was like, oh my God, I'm actually like, I've been contributing to this culture of like, you know, I'm not disabled, I'm okay. And this whole thing where it's just like, I am disabled, I have a physical disability. So what? Uh, I'm still just like a filmmaker and gonna make films. And, you know, that's kind of the sentiment that I go off of. I'm excited about the TV show. Anything else? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, I do have a coming of age, like more kind of in the R rated comedy space, like a Lady Bird or eighth grade, um, kind of loosely based off my own high school experience, but that's a vomit draft right now and no one should ever read it. My fiance read it and I was like, do you think less of me now or? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, but, well, I'm excited to, to follow along with the rest of your career, Ashley, because I think that you're you. doing really important work. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing what happens next. Yeah, Absolutely. thanks so much for reaching out. Absolutely. Yeah, because I, I tell you, the, this, um, the, this short was dynamic. Like, I was laughing my ass off the whole time. Actually, I woke yeah. my fiance up laughing so hard at it. Cause especially, like, my fiance comes out and she goes, what's so funny? I was like, you should have saw it. This chick in this movie really just, like, chucked something in the grocery store at some chick for, like, being a condescending bitch. It was great. And she goes, okay, <laughs> so easily amused. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, was, it is most excellent. Is it still available to stream online at MailChimp? Um, I think the last day, I just got an email right before I hopped on to this of them thanking us. So I assume it's, you know, not there anymore. But if you DM me, I am very likely to share you a link because I just want people to see this film and you know, especially people in the community, like just hit me up on Instagram and I'll send you a link. That's right. And if you are looking to uh, get a copy of that, it is on InstaG at Ash Eakin and on the tweet machine at Ash Eakin. And you can always find way more information about her and the other stuff that she has going on. And there's some really exciting stuff there at AshleyEakin.com. Ashley, thank you so much for hanging thank out. Thank you so, yeah, much. Thanks so much. We were very excited for the chance to talk to you. And then when, when the communication on, on both of our ends kind of like drifted at one point, I was yeah. like, oh, no, we lost her. Coronavirus oh, no. trade. <laughs> yeah. This for virus sure. is ruining everything. Yeah. yeah. It, I, I feel I feel like kind of drunk and hung over all the time. Yeah, right? I know. I was like, is it? I don't know what day it is. But all right, another Zoom <laughs> meeting. Let's go. Yeah. I feel like the guy on the couch from Half Baked. <laughs> right. Is it January? Yeah. It's August. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ashley. And we will. Uh, you'll have to come back whenever the, the series premieres. Yeah, Absolutely. I will. Definitely. I am. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to see that. So we will. Uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Sounds good. Thank you. We're the Plotaholics Ripping plots apart for you Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man